Hello everyone. Now today what we're going to do is we're going to check an IGBT for short circuits. IGBTs in all my years of looking at them when they give up the ghost they always short circuit. Sometimes the short circuit is catastrophic and sometimes it gently falls off the cliff and maybe one of the IGBTs inside the package go bad. Now this particular model that we have here has six IGBTs for running the motor and one IGBT for the regenerative braking circuit. We have the high side here labeled P as for positive and we have the low side here labeled N for negative. We have B here for brake. On the high side, we have three IGBTs. On the low side, we have the negative side, we have three IGBTs. We have a high side here, a low side here, a high side here, a low side here, a high side here and a low side here. In between the high side here and the low side there we have the U leg for the motor. And between these two we have the V leg for the motor. And between these two here on the end we have the W leg for the motor. That's the U, V, and W for the motor. That's how you connect the three-phase motor to this IGBT. Now over on this side right here we would connect the regenerative brake and resistor. We would have a resistor from B to bus plus. Now I've seen in the past where the six IGBTs that are connected to the motor are good but the regenerative braking transistor is shorted and when that regenerative braking transistor shorts all of that energy flows through the resistor through the shorted transistor to ground to bus ground this N terminal and that opens up that res resistor. You can always tell when that resistor's opened up because it's smoked. Okay. Now, over here on this side, I've seen where the high side and the low side of U, V, or W, it's, it's a random sequence, have shorted. And all of that energy from plus bus the P side of the IGBT flows through the high side IGBT and flows through the low side IGBT at the same time back to bus ground, the end terminal, and all of that energy explodes the IGBT. It tears it apart. Now on your calculator, let's say for instance we have a, a plus 300 volt DC bus from the P terminal to the N terminal. On your calculator, and, and let's say we have zero ohms here, which would be a short, and zero ohms here, which would be a short. On your calculator, if you divide 300 by zero, 300 divided by zero, your calculator can't do it. Your calculator gives you a division by zero error. But in the real world, when you have 300 volts DC divided by 
this short circuit, zero ohms, <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> and it causes havoc. 300 divided by zero in an IGBT is an explosion. <laughs> I've been standing next to drives when they go bang. Oh lordy, you don't want to be there. <laughs> so, 300 divided by zero in your calculator can't happen. But 300 divided by zero in the real world does happen. Okay, so now... What are we looking for when we want to check our IGBT for short circuits? Well, what we're actually, actually measuring across, we're looking for a diode drop. All of your IGBTs, and let me explain to you what the uh, acronym there. IGBT stands for Insulated Gate Bipolar Transistor. So if you look at the symbol here, you have the insulated gate and over here you have a collector and emitter of a transistor it is a hybrid of the MOSFET which has the insulated gate and the transistor which has the collector and emitter insulated gate bipolar transistor so what we're looking for in a normal a good IGBT is this diode right here. This is inherent with, it's built into the IGBT. And that's called, well it has a few different terms. I call it a spike suppression diode. It's also called freewheeling diode. But what it, what its purpose is is to protect uh, that collector emitter junction when the coil of the motor is turned off. When you turn this IGBT off, uh, the back EMF will not hurt the collector and emitter because of this diode right here. So what we're actually checking is if this point right here to that point right there is shorted. So you want to take or this one right here or this one right here or this one and this one and this one and we're going to check all of them. You have to check all of them. You can't just check one and expect it to be good because this whole package has uh, the chance for one of these to be bad and the other is good. And we'll see that in a minute. I'll show you. So you take your, we're, you take your black lead, we're going to look across this junction right here. You take your black lead and put it on P, which would be the cathode of this diode. And you put your red lead on U and you should have a good diode drop across that spike suppression diode and then you check this one black lead on the cathode red lead on V and you should have that good diode drop if you don't you'll see the short so we put our black lead here and we put our red lead on W and you should have a good diode job. And what we've done there is we've checked those three IGBTs. Now let's go ahead, since we have this regenerative braking transistor, let's go in here and we'll check the free will and diode of that guy right there. We put our black lead here and we put our red lead on B and we should have a good diode drop. Now keeping that same concept, let's go down here and check the low side. But now look down here. The cathodes 
of the three IGBTs go to U, V, and W. And the anodes of the three diodes go to N. So now we want to put our red lead down here on N and our black lead on U to check this one and V to check that one and W to check that one. And if we have three pretty closely matched diode drops here and three pretty matched close, uh, uh, closely matched diode drops up here we can say that the motor side is good. So let's go over here and check the regenerative braking IGBT. We put uh, here it really doesn't matter because if it's shorted you will you will see but just in keeping we'll put the uh, black lead up here and the red lead down here and see if we have a short from collector to emitter. And that's how we check the power section. Now, here's something very important, and I have to stress this. If one of these or two of these are bad or shorted on the power side, what you have to do is you have to go back to the gate side and if C, if it's shorted to the output side, to the power side and if it is you're gonna to have to go back into your drive and check the gate driving circuitry of that servo drive if you do not check the gate let me back up if you do not check and repair any of the gate driving circuitry that's been damaged by all of this high voltage energy punching through that isolated gate and wiping out that firing channel and you replace this bad IGBT with a new IGBT without repairing that gate driving circuitry you will wipe out the new isolated gate bipolar transistor package I have worked on drives where that short circuit energy is punched through that isolated gate and went back in and wiped out firing channels. We call them firing channels. Uh, you can call them gate firing channels, gate driving circuitry, gate driving channels. And I've had to go back in and repair the circuitry that was driving into this gate and it's not easy because most times nowadays that gate driving circuitry is surface mount very easy to miss one part in that surface mount circuitry and all it takes is one part to go bad um, for it to wipe out the new IGBT package. Okay, now we're going to look at an IGBT and based on what we've just talked about, we're going to uh, troubleshoot that circuitry. Okay, so we want to take and put our meter in the diode function. And we're going to take and look at the diode drops across this IGBT. So the first thing we want to do is take our black lead and put on the P 
terminal. That's our bus plus terminal. That's going to be the positive voltage that drives the motor. And then we're going to go and put a red lead on W and we should get a good diode drop. That looks good. Let's move our red lead to V. There we go. That's a good one. And we put our red lead on U. Uh-oh. There's the bad one. Look at that. So from the P terminal to the U leg that goes out to the motor, we're shorted. We are slap dab shorted. We cannot use this IGBT anymore. For completeness, let's uh, go ahead and check the low side. The end side. This would be bus ground. We put a red lead on N. We put our black lead on W. Move it over to the V leg going out to the motor. We got a good diode drop there. So W is good. V is good. Let's check U. And U is good. We have a good diode drop there of 0 0.401. Let's go ahead and check the regenerative braking transistor. We put the black lead on P and the red lead on B. There's a diode drop. And we put our black lead on B and our red lead on N. And there's a diode drop. So the regenerative braking IGBT is good. The only problem in this package is, is that we have a short from P to U. We, we have to do now, we have to see if any of that short circuit energy shot back up through the gate. And if it did, we're going to have to go back into the drive and repair that gate driving circuitry. So we have a short from P to U. Everything else is good. And we'll find the circuit according to the schematic right here. Here is U. This IGBT right here up to P is shorted. The gate is on pin 7. Okay, so now we have to check from pin 7 to P and U to see if we have a short circuit there. This is pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, Lordy. We got more work to do. Pin 7 to P is shorted. Let's pin, check pin 7 to U. Ah, oh, <laughs> it's shorted too. So that short circuit energy shot through the isolated gate and we're going to have some damage in that gate driving circuitry of the servo drive. So we ain't done. We have to replace this and we have to replace the blown parts in that servo drive's gate firing circuit of the U channel. Where you go? That's how you test an IGBT in a servo drive
or inverter drive hope y'all enjoyed that that was some fun troubleshooting we got more work to do though we're gonna have to run back up into that drive and repair that gate driving circuitry it's gonna be a chore <laughs> oh, wish us luck thank you for watching We'll see you next time.